Warning, there are people pretending to be me in the comments. This is what a comment from me looks like. Notice that the name is spelled perfectly and notice the border around the name. That's how you know it's from me. You can also click on my name to make sure you actually go to my channel to double check. And this is what a comment from an imposter will look like. It has weird characters in the name or comments and it's usually going to ask you to add them on WhatsApp or Telegram. I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram and I would never ask you to add me on there. All right, so please be careful, use your common sense, and now let's get back to the video. Hey, how's it going GPU heads? Thanks for clicking on my video. Seb Heslo here, and today we are just gonna have a chat about the five most common mistakes that I see new miners make when they first start out mining. But first I'm gonna put this down because this thing is heavy. <laughs> um, there we go. All right, and let's get into the very first mistake that I see new miners do. And that is basically just not doing enough research before you start. Now, I'm not saying you have to be an expert on anything before you even, you know, get started into it. And the best way to learn is to just get going with it and sort of make mistakes and learn from your own mistakes. But I do see sometimes people that they basically just watch like the first five minutes of a you know nice hash tutorial and they think that is all they will ever need to learn about this whole thing and that isn't quite the truth you know there is some things to this and this is something that you're doing that you want to be earning money from and you know people go to school for three to six years to learn a profession so you can probably spare like an afternoon you know just watching a few youtube videos and just get a little bit of a better, you know, understanding of what it is you're doing. And if you need somewhere to start, I actually have a perfect playlist for you, which is called, Are You New to Mining? Then start here, which has all of my beginner tutorials, like how to download a miner, how to set it up with a pool, how to overclock, how to safely power your mining rigs. Just all those like sort of basic videos that I recommend any new miner would watch. So I'll link that video uh, playlist up in the card over there and as well as in the description uh, below this video. And that brings us to mistake number two, which is m directly mining Ethereum with not enough hash power and let me explain what i mean there so a lot of new miners maybe you know you start out as a gamer you have a pretty decent graphics card in your computer and you're thinking ah i can make a bit of extra money by mining on my gaming rig and while you definitely can if you start just direct mining ethereum what you'll soon realize is that your one graphics card is not really going to cut it um, or well it is like you're gonna it be able to mine profitably on it the thing is that like the amount that you need to mine specifically uh, when it comes to ethereum to actually get a payout into your own wallet is pretty big like it's for most pools um, to in order for the payouts to actually make sense financially with the uh, transaction fees and all that on the ethereum network currently you probably need to mine about, you know, at least 0.1 Ethereum before, you know, getting a payout is worth it. And mining that much on a single or a couple of GPUs is not like, like that's going to take you a month at least or maybe more, you know. But the good news is that there are actually some great alternatives. Now, of course, one alternative is that you could mine something like Ravencoin instead. Uh, where you know getting a payout is like the, the bar is very low there like you just need to mine usually like 10 raven coins which on an average GPU should you know you should be able to do that in a day or a few days at least uh, but the other alternative is to mine on two miners with their new feature that lets you get a payout in nano while mining ethereum and I actually have a full video guide on how that works as well so you can check that up there i guess uh, but basically uh, the thing that happens is you're mining ethereum so you're still mining the most profitable cryptocurrency uh, in terms of you know payouts but they are paying you for that ethereum in a different currency called nano so you're still making just as much it's just that you're being paid in nano instead of in ethereum 
and that way you can get a payout every single day instead of having to wait until you reach that threshold of 0.1 Ethereum for it to be worth it basically. All right, so let's move on to our third mistake that I see all too often. And this one I really do see all too often. And that is not running your GPU fans fast enough. And let me explain what I mean. Uh, so many times uh, someone will, you know, type in our Misfit Mining Discord and being like, oh, I'm not getting the hash rate that I am expecting to get on my GPU. And, you know, then you do some kind of troubleshooting together with them, trying to help them. And then after a while, you figure out that their GPU is thermal throttling, which is when the GPU is like throttling its own performance uh, because it's getting too warm. And then you're asking them, why is it getting so warm? Like, what's your fan setting? And then they'll be like, oh, I'm running my fans at like 60%. And, and, and you're just like, put it to 100%. Like your GPU is too warm. Like put the fan on at 100% and then you know, you, you, and like, I understand where they're coming from. I really do. Uh, but they will say something like, oh, but I don't want my, my fans to burn out. And of course, my, my response to that is always, well, you know, like changing your fans on your GPU is cheap and easy, but a GPU that is damaged due to like chronic, like overheating, that is like that just goes in the trash like your whole your whole gpu is just garbage at that point so it is much better to just blast your fans at a hundred percent if that is what is needed to keep your gpu cool than to try to like save your fans because as i said fans are so cheap and they're so easy to replace it like i've already burned out a few fans and replaced them and then had to replace them again and that is just what happens but as I said, they're cheap and it's easy to replace them. So yeah, anyway, I'm not gonna ramble on about that forever, but just please like run your fans at a high enough speed to keep your GPU cool. Please, please guys, please. All right, let's move on to mistake number four. And that is a mistake that I also see all too commonly, which is that you just copy someone else's overclock settings. So again, we'll get someone saying, oh, my, my GPU isn't stable or my GPU isn't getting the hash rate that I'm expecting it to get or why is my GPU crashing when I try to mine? And you find that they have just, you know, seen someone else post their overclock settings on the internet and copied them for their own GPU. And then of course it isn't working because as I say in like almost all of my videos at this point, like each GPU is like individual and it's its own unique overclock settings and you need to tweak your gpu to find what those settings are so for example uh, i have two separate 1660 supers but one has hynix memory and one has samsung memory the hynix one needs to go negative 502 on the memory to get the you know uh, 32 mega hash that that card can get but the samsung one needs to go positive 1200 so if i were to just copy the 1200 you know if someone had written those settings on the internet and i just copied them to my hynix one then my hynix one would probably crash and then the other way around if i saw the negative 502 and put that on my samsung one my samsung one would probably only get like 20 mega hash instead of 32. so all that to say that you need to tweak your gpus and find the overclockings that work best for you and if you want to learn how to do that, I actually have a full guide. So I'll link that up there as well. So you can learn how to perfectly find the best overclock settings for your GPU, no matter what coin you're mining, basically. All right. And that brings us to our final mistake, which is not getting enough power supplies or not having power supplies with enough wattage or just skimping out on power supplies in general. So this is something that I see quite often where people will have an issue of, you know, either, well, if it's really bad, burning cables and things like that, but more commonly, their rigs might just randomly shut off on their own. And nine times out of 10, when you get something like that happening, it is because you are putting way too much GPUs on a power supply that 
has no headroom basically so what you need to do is even though maybe you have a i'm gonna keep going with the 1660 super example like they usually when mining pull maybe 70 watts but that doesn't mean that they are gonna consistently pull just 70 watts like they can still spike up to their full tdp which is the max amount of power they can pull which is 125 watts i believe so they can still do a little you know power spike like that as well as you know you might also run into something crashing or not working software wise where all of a sudden all your gpus start pulling max power all of a sudden and what you need to do is you need to make sure that your power supplies have enough headroom for handling that situation basically so when i buy power supplies for my mining rigs like i buy like i i think to myself okay what is the absolute max amount of power that this rig can physically pull so let's say i have 10 1660 supers in a rig so that's 125 watts times 10 so 1250 watts and then i add another 100 or so for like the motherboard and cpu so 1350 and then i add another 25 percent on top of that as well just to be safe and that is the amount of wattage that i buy uh, in terms of power supplies for my mining rig so I look at what is the TDP for all of my GPUs and all of my components and I add 25% to that and that is the wattage that I buy power supplies for the rig. And if you want to learn more about power supplies and safety and why that is important, I have a full guide called how to safely power your mining rigs. And so I'll link that up there as well. And guys, this stuff really is important because if you don't pay attention to this, what could potentially happen is you are gonna run your cables or your power supply at a higher wattage than it can handle. And that can lead to a cable catching fire and basically your whole house burning down. Now, I don't mean to sound dramatic, but that is how serious this is. And I feel like I see it all too often where, you know, people will spend thousands and thousands of dollars on getting gpus but they won't spend an additional like hundred dollars to get a more powerful power supply that can actually safely handle the load of those gpus basically and so what i urge you to do if you feel like this might be you um, you can just buy an additional power supply and you can get like a, a it doesn't need to be a high wattage one like get a cheaper like 750 watt power supply or something and just just offload like two of your gpus onto that power supply and i have a video on how to use multiple power supplies for the same mining rig so link to that up there as well uh have i linked enough videos up there this this video <laughs> anyway and then you can just sleep better knowing that your mining rigs basically you've done everything you can in order to keep your mining rigs as safe as possible but that is gonna be it for this video and if you found this helpful then please give the video one of these i'd really appreciate it and what you gotta do now is you gotta click on that next video on the screen because this video is over you can also click the picture on my face to subscribe to the channel i'd really appreciate that but yeah Go click on that next video and I'll see you there. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye.